of the, uh, the Skyrim press conference, which all could make it. It's late hour of the day, long day. Um, we have CEO Patrick of Skyrim and CEO of SAS, Uncle Van Der sitting behind the table. We first, before I give the floor to Patrick, we'll do a short presentation by both men, and then we will kick off in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Kuhn. Good afternoon, everyone. We're really uh, happy, and thank you for making time to meet uh, with my team. I'm uh, very pleased to be joined today by my soon-to-be colleague, Anko, uh, as of, hopefully, 1st of September. Let me show you one slide, which is which was downtown Dubai in the year 2000. At that time, this hotel was not in Dubai, it was still a, a speck of dust <laughs> in the desert. Um, and uh, this is Dubai today. Of course, we know, we know what uh, incredible transformation it was. And we wanted to, to have a uh, comparison with this team because 2000 was the, the previous picture was the year when Sky Team was created, was founded by only four airlines, but big ones: Air Mexico, Air France, Delta, and Korea Air. And now we have gone through a huge transformation as well. Uh, 19 members, soon 20, and. Uh, a lot of projects. Uh, our network has grown to cover 90% of the world's most important traffic flows. We have uh, six branded lounges uh, and frequent flyers enjoying benefits, including sky priority services at almost or more than uh, 1,000 airports in the world. Already we, have, we are two years into our five-year plan and uh, as we prepare to mark our 24th anniversary, here's a short video that captures some of Skating's current achievements. the southernmost and northernmost airports in the world. 
Ushuaia in Argentina and Svalbard in Norway. We are delighted to be welcomed to SAS into our family. Anko, would you like to say something? Thank you. Patrick, thank you very much. Um, and great to be here with all of you. And thank you um, as well to all the members of the press for, uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated on what is, of course, for us a very uh, joyful day. Um, a great honor. We're excited to be here. We're excited to tell our story. Uh, I think for many in the world, of course, indeed, you know SES from being part of Star Alliance. And I do want to, in a way, maybe start there by saying that we have been a very proud founder of the Star Alliance. And this is the first time in history, actually, that a founding partner changes alliance. And that in itself is, of course, something that, uh, that shows you really the magnitude of what we're doing and you know, what we're doing here. And let's go into why we're doing that in a second. I want to be respectful and really thank also everyone in STAR, we've, we've done that um, of course also in bilateral relationships with everybody because that has been a good relationship for all those years. Yet here we are, extremely excited about what's to come because I do think that what we can build with SkyZ will be bigger and more important for SAS than what we are leaving behind and of course that future opportunity is, I think, what binds both Skyfi but also SAS. Um, there is something that clearly in the Scandinavian market is also quite important, and let me immediately start there by saying that Euro bonus is one of the reasons, of course, that Skyteam and call it Anna France that we're going to talk about in a second, are interested in us. We have 8 million very loyal customers to us. And what's important for those customers is that the Eurobonus program is part of SAS, the benefits are part of SAS, and of course their status, their level, the um, associated benefits that comes with these levels, is all part of SAS and that will not change. What will change is of course the relationship that we then have with all the very strong Sky Team airlines. SAS customers will benefit from the global presence of SkyTeam and from the lounges and from the southernmost airport that already was highlighted here, that global network that SkyTeam is part of. I actually thought it was quite fun. I hadn't realized that we are actually the most northern part. For us, everything in the north is so bread and butter that we don't even think about it. Um, quite great. Um, the strategic focus of SkyTeam, and certainly also for us, in in building hopefully a deeper form of relationships, right? Sky Team, for sure, all Sky Team airlines very important. I was here this afternoon, as Patrick said, had the opportunity to quickly also speak with all the Sky Team airlines. And for us, it's not about just the big ones, it's really about the global presence of Sky Team. For us, it's really about building that bilateral relationship with each and every single one of them. We do have something which is quite unique because a typical alliance entry takes you about 18 or takes about 18 to 24 months and here we're doing it in roughly six to nine so automatically we are of course focused on the ones that are called have the biggest network overlap or the biggest network addition to us and so it will be focusing more on our france scale and virgin and delta as a first step but we will definitely build that out um, that new depth of partnerships is something that we're looking forward to. I started myself in SkyTeam, not that that is relevant um, for this change, but I have at least seen from up close how different partnerships are being treated and certainly joint ventures are really being developed within SkyTeam. Um, KLM Northwest, of course, had the first joint venture in the world and that became the Air France KLM Delta joint venture over time. Um, we would really like to see a path towards that. Right? I'm choosing my words carefully, but I think you understand what at least our interest and hopefully common interest within the SkyTeam family is for that. Now, then last but not least, what are we uh, giving to SkyTeam? Well, this is a fantastic part of the world. Uh, we have a beautiful Part, and I really mean that beautiful, but the sun was out for the last 30 days in Scandinavia and I truly think it's unbeatable. Um, fantastic parts of the world where we have beautiful cities all around 
and a part of the world that I think is still not yet fully explored. You know, I was very happy to see a Wall Street Journal article a few weeks ago uh, that really highlighted both summer, where of course it's cooler than in some parts of the world, and winter, where there is snow guarantee still in Scandinavia. We are seeing that. We're really seeing that there is this, call it, influx, um, right, this move towards both summer and winter traffic into Scandinavia, and that is the network that we have built. Our network, as you probably know, is everything from Los Angeles to Tokyo and from Svalbard to um, the northern tip of, um, of, of Africa and everything in between, with a big emphasis on intra-Scandinavia and intra-Europe. This summer, roughly 130 aircraft, from the smallest to the biggest, the 350, and we really do bring those 8 million passengers, 8 million loyal Eurobonus passengers closer to Skyfield. And we're looking forward to being a very contributing partner to Skyfield as well. We thank everyone. This is, of course, a few months of transition um, when we really have a lot of system work ahead of ourselves, there's a lot of process work that still needs to happen. We are fully committed and the team is fully committed to making that happen to fully be ready on the 1st of September. Bachi, back to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anko. And actually there's something else that unites SAS with KT and its members. It's about working towards making travel more responsible. It's a shared mission that we have, and we have a tool. We have a friendly competition that we organize that is called the Sustainable Flight Challenge. It's the third year that we are organizing this friendly competition, and for the first time, we will have non-Sky Team Airlines that will join this challenge. Two of them, Corandon Airlines and TUI, um, are willing and will participate to this year's challenge. This is a first for leisure carriers and it shows uh, how seriously the whole industry uh, takes the pressing issue of climate change and aviation's environmental impact. And I'm delighted to add that SAS will also be joining the challenge, the friendly competition this year after they are joining. How does this flight challenge work? <laughs> By using the power of friendly competition. And we challenge participants to find new solutions and innovations uh, to help reduce flames impact, at least in the short term. Over the last two years, more than 450 ideas have been generated. And also shared, of course, uh, between participants. And the focus of this year's challenge is to take these ideas, to scale them and to implement them, to demonstrate the impact that they can have. It's about acceleration and implementation. Winners will be decided by a, by a panel of experts in sustainability and it will be announced later in the, in the year. Another way we can offer a more responsible travel experience is by enabling customers to combine air and rain. Many of our members already work with rail operators. For example, you see them in France Delta, Ita Airways, KLM. And SkyTeam wants to be the most integrated of the airline of the alliance, of the airline alliance. And it's not only about the airline themselves, the network of <coughs> almost 13,000 daily flights, but also across rail networks. So SkyTeam is in talks with train operators to, uh, to explore 
how best we we can combine our expertise to to facilitate intra-European travel for customers. I sincerely hope to be in the position to share more with you later in the year. To realize Sky Team's ambition for a more integrated and more seamless travel experience, we are continuing our focus on technology to, to deliver end to end customer experience. This is uh, key to Sky Team's vision for 2027, and uh, I'm very pleased to announce that our Sky Team seamless check in solution, initially launched with Aeromexico and Delta, is now complete across our network. No, no, please. Today, 93% uh, of all customers flying on mixed <coughs> metal itineraries are now covered by this solution. So customers can simply check in via one airline website or app, like if a Delta customer is flying on a Korean air flight, then he can check in from his Delta app or website. So that's, that's a key product that Sky Team is providing to all customers. Meanwhile, we are working towards uh, introducing a la carte options such as seat selections, payment for, for ancillary uh, products, for instance. Which brings me to a quick win for customers. What we call the current calculator. It, this, this calculator was developed in-house and has been an, an amazing success. It helps customers on mixed McDonald's itineraries to travel confidently, knowing that their hand the baggage complies with every flight on this itinerary. A lot of our members have integrated that in their own communication tools, like on their website. We are also working on additional calculators to help customers navigate their travel more seamlessly. Watch this space. So, as you can see, there's a lot happening at SkyTeam. We look forward to further growth, greater integration, and uh, I'm really excited for the, for the future. Thank you for your attention, and now I'd like to turn the floor over to you for, for questions and answers. <laughs> Please raise your hand if you want. We've got a microphone over here, so over there first. So my name is Carlos from IRE in Brazil, and I have two questions. First from you, and then from Uncle as well, but the same topic. First one is about the aeroflot suspension that have been suspended for almost two years since the invasion of Ukraine and have uh, seen any changes that most of the customers itself are not going to the political side. And for Uncle, if the, the situation of how it's affecting SAS right now, because of various exclusions, as we are right now, is not changing for the new instructor. What's your question exactly on the suspension? Is there any way to revoke the suspension or just remain or just uh, how that affects the customers right now? The suspension will remain, uh, will remain active uh, during this period uh, because the situation has not changed. That's unfortunate, but it will, be, uh, it, will be, uh, it will continue for a few other months. Okay, and then for Ingo, how about uh, yeah. if there are changes on flights or like uh, some routes are going to be taken, some changes are going to be future for the SAS regarding the better routes in space? Yeah, thank you. Now, very complicated for us, I think even more complicated for us being so high up in North Europe. <coughs> uh, so, for, of course, um, I think an airline just a bit to the east from us and for us is probably the hardest <coughs> in the world because we've got most circumvention flying to do, right? So, 
For us, it's about three and a half hours, two and a half to three and a half hours, one way additional, um, <coughs> one way additional on each every uh, each and every single Asian uh, Asian flights. We were roughly three times to three and a half times the size to Asia before um, COVID, and then subsequently before Russian airspace closure, um, as we are today. So that tells you something about the magnitude of the impact for us. Uh, we do put some frequencies back this year again, right? One more in Shanghai, one more in Tokyo. But look, in the bigger scheme of things, um, again, prior to all of this, we were three and a half times as big, three, three and a half times as big in Asia as we are today. So, tremendous impact, three and a half hours, um, okay, two and a half to three and a half, depending on the, on the destination of one way, with current fuel pricing, with a very long Swedish kroner. Um, it is just very tough to make that work. We don't see anything really, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, I think, for when those things may change. So that will remain for the airline industry as a whole, but certainly for SAS being so high up in North Europe, it will remain a challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Poon. Small question for Patrick. Can you tell a little bit more why TUI and Corendor are joining in the Sustainable Flight Challenge, please? They, it's their initiative, they love that all the war, but they are interested by, by the approach uh, of this teamwork, which is not a competitive approach, which is really to uh, move the lines and to accelerate uh, the transition. So uh, they, they ask us if uh, we, they could be included and we, our members accepted. So, uh, Richard Suman, Airline World. Richard Suman, a question to Uncle from the Rev. Um, the North Atlantic is perceived as being the region where you can gain the most benefits from joining SkyChi. But in, at what level, where do you see you can win compared to your server? Uh, sorry, your, your last one, your last, you compare. Choose Star Alliance. Yeah, but before that, so just like North Atlantic? Or, yeah, or, or do you see other regions as well? No, no, I think, I think really for us joining SkyTeam, I think there is really a bigger, uh, a bigger play. Um, look, the Air France KLM relationship um, is going to prove also, I think, very interesting for us. Um, two hubs, Central of Europe, right? With our strong position and their strong position, of course, in North Europe, there's 8 million people. But there is other partners that we're already in SkyTeam world, also in touch with, also in other parts of the world. I think, don't, don't underestimate in that sense, um, it's a very wealthy part of the world, it's a very well-traveled part of the world, and so I think also for SkyTeam, it is very interesting to tap into right, SkyTeam through SAS and, and connect really SAS to the um, SkyTeam pipeline. North Atlantic, of course, very interesting for us ourselves as well, um, right, I think we, we from a long haul point of view, most of our long haul capacity goes into the United States anyway. And so if again there we can build something very strong and you see our network adjustments already for, for this year, next year, right? And that's new work, more JFK, a bit more Boston already. We launch, of course, Copenhagen, Atlanta. Right? There is all sorts of things that we can really do together with Delta. I don't um, think for a second it will just be exclusive to that Air France Gala Delta relationship. I really think this is going to be broader. Um, stay tuned. Yes. It could be young, the Daily Telegraph, the Netherlands. A question on uh, the skip hole, what we call the skip hole situation. Lowering the cap of our uh, national uh, airport. Um, what do you, in perspective, or can you do something uh, in your role from SkyTeam? Thank you. It occurred, yeah, uh, it, it hits a serious situation. Uh, not only for KLM, but also uh, for all the airlines and members that are operating this report, which is more than half of our members, 14, uh, we trade. Um, so, um, actually we are following the lead of KLM. They are really on the forefront of the, of the discussion. 
we, we try also to combine our strength. KLM is very active to find uh, a long term solution uh, with the airport and the government, so uh, we are Sorry, okay. supporting that. In your discussion? It is. Yeah? It is. Okay. It is a serious topic, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Question from Italy, Gianni De Lavori, Sole 24 ore. I would like to know the situation of the relationship between uh, SkyTeam and ITA Airways, since everybody knows that ITA is uh, going uh, towards Lufthansa, but the deal has not been completed yet. So, what's the state of the art of the ITA B, of the membership of ITA with SkyTeam? As you rightfully said, uh, the operation is not completed. So, since then, and if it is, uh, uh, they, they, are, they are full members of SkyT. So, uh, so they are active members of SkyT. And then we see. Thank you. Uh, next question for Katie. Are you good? Yeah. Uh, Mark Pelling, Arabian and African, quite loud. Uh, <laughs> Patrice, two questions. Just one air rail. I seem to remember you said exactly the same thing last year, if I'm not wrong, on getting a deal. Uh, announcing something, so just why does it take so long, why is it so hard, and what makes you confident that you can do it this year? And on the sustainable flight challenge, you're obviously adding a couple of carriers to that, including SAS. Will all the uh, carriers take part in the challenge this year? Because I've heard that there's some might have some difficulties. The difference between uh, last year and this year is that uh, we have worked a lot on terminality uh, on concrete solutions. We don't want to announce anything before it's clear, ready to be rolled out for the members uh, and, for, and their customers. So uh, distribution solutions, loyalty uh, benefits, that's what we are working on, uh, on the, uh, with a few operators. So stay tuned, it's, it's coming. And on the chat? The challenge? Your question was about this? Is? No, my, my, sorry, my question was uh, do you expect all of you've added members, mm -hmm. uh, others, uh, do you expect all of your members to take part or will some have some difficulties to take part? Well, some have difficulties for obvious reasons like Middle East, for instance, Middle East Airlines, uh, but uh, we have more airlines than, than members uh, participating because some uh, of uh, so, some, uh, some of the, the, the affiliated airlines of members also uh, are, uh, are participating uh, in China, so, uh, in, uh, for instance, uh, um, Chantelia also. Uh, so, uh, so the total will be more than 22 this year, and we have 19 members. Okay. Um, question from Italy. from Dublin and Ireland. Uh, you mentioned uh, you have an expedited joining process for uh, questions for ANCO. What is the most difficult uh, part of an airline um, embracing a new alliance? What are the difficulties and were there any little surprises in there you didn't expect? Um, no, no surprises because it also works at different airlines and also in a, in a way uh, works on alliance entries or with alliances um, for quite a while. I was in 25 years in the industry so I don't think it's surprising. One of the biggest challenges, there's not many things you can do in parallel, it's really, it's really sequential. Um, right? So for instance, co-chair filing with airlines, you really have a limited um, resource pool where just people who can actually physically do that work, the knowledge on, on that work. And secondly, from an IT perspective, so really IT frequently is the bottleneck here, um, and it makes it, it just makes it really hard to, to work much faster, which once again is why we just have to prioritize certain airlines over others, at least from the beginning, um, and then we'll work our way right through, through everybody else, but the first batch is really the ones that are the most relevant, the most, the most network overlap, and the most potential. Um, IT bottlenecks, and, and the impossibility of working in parallel right on multiple tracks. That's what makes it really hard. Hi, Christian.
Chamberlain from Point Hacks in Australia. Uh, two related questions, uh, but they both relate to the expansion of SkyTeam. Uh, you've been working to add new partners, most recently Virgin Atlantic and soon SAS. You've been rolling out branded lounges. But on lounge access, you probably know what I'm going to say, your alliance-wide policy, you compete with one world and start in a way for passengers. Um, the policy of SkyTeam is to access lounges when flying internationally only, which differs for that um, of your competitors. As you are looking to attract new passengers and also with SAS, are you considering expanding that um, to permit domestic passengers access as an alliance policy? And as a follow-on, would SkyTeam consider a third elite level above elite plus, noting that One World has uh, One World Emerald for those who fly more than most? Excellent questions. Um, I can tell you that loyalty uh, is part of our key priorities uh, for this year. So those are things we are discussing among uh, many others, but uh, we, uh, we are aware of that and uh, working actively on this. What exactly is your question on SAS? Uh, lounge access for domestic SAS passengers, as they get with Star Alliance Gold. Well, we try to have a consistent uh, policy. Uh, so whatever will be the policy at that time, uh, then SAS will be, uh, will be part of it. Um, Bruno Trinity, who is the co in Paris. Uh, my question is for Anko regarding this uh, sequential process. Um, you, could you summarize what would be the, the main step you have to ensure to reach in order to uh, be, become a full member of SkyTeam, but also in order to uh, integrate uh, GVU with uh, Air France KLM and Delta? And specifically, where are you regarding the antitrust immunity process? Yeah, thank you. Um, no, let's, go through, let's go through the steps. I'm going to take you maybe a step back. As you know, we've done a restructuring, or we are in our restructuring. There is cool, there's about 5% left. Those are two important steps that we still have to go through. Um, the US part of things, the Corner Chapter 11 process, has been completely vetted and approved by the US judge uh, under Call It Two Conditions. So the US part is completely done, um, Corner Chapter 11 done, but two conditions. One, that we um, um, uh, get to a local implementation, so that's what we call the Swedish implementation. We're going through it at the moment, so in, in plain language, to make chapter 11 stick in Scandinavia, right, from a legal perspective. Uh, we're doing that at the moment. Fastest path to completion would be in a month. Um, I think it would likely, and in all for practical matters, would probably slip into call it July or August, right, so, so over the summer. Um, so, in other words, nearly there. The second condition by the judge in the United States is the uh, regulatory approval process. Um, that regulatory approval process, um, we expect to have no issues with that because this is a very different case from, from other cases that we have also seen. There is a reason um, for why this deal is set up the way also, of course, it is. Rise Air France, get them and says will still be competitors. Right? Let's, let's be very clear here. Um, we're talking Sky Team, and we're talking, of course, investment by a consortium, but Air France KLM is buying 19.9%. Um, and that still makes us and keeps us um, competitors. And I think that's very important to realize. And we keep on iterating that point also to our own employees, because that is really, truly the case that we are still, in that sense, at arm's length. Now, um, that process, we hope to dovetail, right? We hope to make sure that the timelines of then um, obtaining, hopefully, uh, European Commission approval for that um, in, in time to complete all of this. We believe that we have a strong case. Like I said, all cases differ, but we believe that we have a strong case because this case is so market tested. There is private equity involved, and that per definition means that this case is completely market tested, and on that basis, we do believe that we've run a very competitive process, and we believe and hope, of course, therefore, that that will factor into the Commission's decision. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, from Patrick and I call up to question. What about plans for Latin America? Recently, uh, SASA announced a new route to Atlanta. And for Latin America, do you consider SkyTeam 
considered to have new members in this region? Well, I'll talk from a destination perspective. I would love to fly to Latin America because I've spent quite some time there. So uh, you're about the right, uh, right? You're asking the right person. Um, we have definitely thought of some destinations there. They're on our list. We're, we're building the business cases for them. And um, yeah, from a personal but also professional perspective, we would love to fly to Latin America. For partners or new airlines, I'll leave that up to the world metric. We have already two, two, two strong partners. We have Air Mexico and Air Olympia South uh, Both are developing. Uh, also, our partner, our, our members have a, a strong relationship in the region uh, with uh, Gold, Avianca, and with, uh, with Latam. Uh, so, we are watching. Uh, as, as I said, we, we want to, to be the most integrated alliance. So what will make sense, most sense for, for, for our member, we will go for it. Hi, Laura Mueller with Air Finance. I just have a quick question circling back about private equity. SAS, uh, a couple of years ago, you had a, a slew of financiers line up for your equity solicitation, including private equity, Castle Lake. I'm just wondering for both, uh, how likely are they now, for sure, those are lucrative fees with um, bankruptcy, and, but how likely are they to engage with you in financing the transition to net zero and sustainability private equity? Have they had those discussions with you? Yeah, of course, because that is also part of our SAS forward program. So first of all, it is very much what SES is about, it's very much what Scandinavia is about. private equity firms are willing to finance them? The private equity firms are investing in SES on a business case that, of course, also includes, for instance, ETS and a growing portion of our cost towards net zero. So, yes, absolutely, our investors are standing behind the business plan which incorporates that. And regarding SES, what the, the financiers that were part of the equity solicitation, is that something that they're interested in as well? I think, I think for this entire industry, whatever investment case you look at at the moment, that should be a topic. I cannot speak for It is a topic, but I just wonder because the fee, the returns on something like bankruptcy is highly lucrative, but maybe not with sustainability. My point is, I'm just wondering if it's been proven yet, like what kind of returns they can expect and if that's meeting their investment thesis. Well, that probably really is a question for private equity because whether it's proven or not to them, I cannot answer. What I can answer is that in, a, in, in every single way, sustainability is a part of what we're doing at the moment and factoring into our not even short-term but medium-term business plans. And that also is incorporated in the business plan that we have put forward as part of the equity solicitation process last year. So of course, in that due diligence for all the ones who were in that data group, all of that was out there for everyone to see. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Rene Barella from Business Travel. My question is curiosity. Uh, you said that usually the transition to join an alliance takes from 18 to 20 months. You're doing it in less than 10. Can you just walk us through the process? Because we saw Virgin Atlantic joining, it took some time. Why are you gonna do it quicker? And Just tell us uh, about those steps, thank you. Yeah, so first of all, um, I, I think normally, um, you're not talking about people who are necessarily in another alliance, right? You're talking about people who start from, from scratch. In the case of some airlines, that right, I know at least through my lifetime, it also you're dealing with airlines that maybe from a system perspective are not as fully developed. We of course are, right? So that already you can you can save some time. Um, secondly, there are issues also that need, I think, in our case, and certainly also again coming back to, for instance, an investment case, a business plan. Um, we don't want to be naked for too long, right? You don't want to have the transition from one alliance to the other also taking too long. Um, not from a financial perspective, but I think from more important, from a passenger perspective, right? So passengers are used to having certain flows and they're, having, they're used to having certain connection points in the world. And so we want to be able to provide that. So I think that really is an incentive for all of us, right? First of all, SAS, of course, but also Sky Team to make sure that we work as fast as possible. Now, that is something that will still heavily depend on the individual airlines, right? Because when do they have time to, for instance, file their co-shares with us, etc.? 
And so it is still a very challenging IT cumbersome project. Um, I think in our case we're showing hopefully right, that we can do this within a much shorter time frame. But when you're not rushed, it is much better, obviously, because then you can really go through every single detail that, um, yeah, that you have to go through. I must say also that that uh, it's because this is pro teams are super professional and, uh, and they know what an alliance is. They are used to that, so uh, so it's uh, really uh, easy. Well, easy, I would not say that, but <laughs> easier. <laughs> Two quick words if I may, Gordon from Skift and Airline Weekly. Uh, Echo to begin, last summer we saw the 3 to one LR doing some regional transatlantic flying from uh, Albuquerque and Gothenburg. How do you see your Sky Team membership evolving your narrow transatlantic program? Uh, and Patrick, when we spoke last November uh, with regards to Heathrow Terminal 4 and the lounge situation there, or the lack of lounge situation, you said, watch this space, there may be some movement with regards to possibly a member uh, taking the lead. Any, any news there? It's way too complicated. Um, uh, what we are considering is maybe to to have uh, extra sky team lounges in some important airports. So I can say. Yeah, the, the LRs. Um, we remain absolutely, I think, convinced that there is a future for those regional. Pipelines to be developed, right? Because regional flights to be, to be developed. I think when you look at where we stand today, uh, it really wasn't the case that we were very unhappy with them last year. But given a transition, given that we have to, of course, get more slots at JFK, given that we have to make sure that that whole call it compatibility to future network of Sky Team, etc., is in place relatively on short notice. Uh, we really have taken a decision to concentrate more on, on, on everything Copenhagen based and like, combine all of that in one place for at least this summer. There are still the white bodies and some regional also going into Stockholm and Oslo, but you get the point, right? Far more concentrated on the, on the big capitals rather than regional. I am convinced um, that over time, and I'm not really talking 10 years from now, right? Uh, that that will be back, right? I think joint venture, hopefully building, or at least a closer partnership building over time, will allow us to um, yeah, tap from regions into <laughs> other people's hubs, and will make that even stronger. So I, I can definitely see that that will be back, just not for this summer. Any more questions? Not a sky team question. You are on the board of the Hart Aerospace Company. You have revised their uh, aircraft design. It's less electric now. Is it still attractive to you as it is? Well, I think what first of all is attractive is that we really support anyone. And, uh, hey, I don't want to be too biased because I'm on the board or at least the advisory board of Hart, and because they're Swedish and because they're close to by in Gothenburg, and therefore we really like them, and because they're well funded, and because etc. We encourage anyone to crack the code on technological developments when it comes to sustainable aviation. As we've spoken about earlier, it is really the challenge that I think all of the industry is and will be faced with over the next um, years. And we simply do not have enough of anything. When you look at sustainable aviation fuel, it's not a matter of demand. We would like to have it today rather than tomorrow. If you look at how much SAS, and I'm going to make the case here for Air France, KLM, and SAS together, we are literally the number one and two airlines in the world already purchasing SAF. Right? SAF. And so it's not a matter of demand, it's not a matter of putting our money where our mouth is, it's simply a matter of someone having not yet cracked the technological code of producing SAF to the quantities that we need and to the price point that we need. The same point you can clearly make for hydrogen, which is the last one right, in, in, uh, in, in those initiatives. Um, fantastic that Airbus is working on it. We're working very closely with Airbus on two things. Zero E, so the, the hydrogen aircraft itself, but then secondly, making sure that clean hydrogen makes its way from production to airports, then into wing or into plane. Uh, right, whatever the future may be, wing or plane, doesn't matter, but at least as long as it can fly. 
Um, and that's also something that we are studying with them. And in that interim, we are very happy with the likes of Howard's Aerospace who are trying to get <coughs> go in electrical aviation. We have, of course, given our input. The first design that they worked on was the 30 seater. That is smallish, um, right? Let's be, let's be honest there. So we told them to go bigger. And at least there, they were right, looking at the 50 seater. Well, right, 50 is better than 30, right? Looking at also overhead costs for, for our industry and making flights work. Um, and, and those designs will have to get adapted over time. Right? But, but really, we, we, I'm not saying that you are, but we really shouldn't be critical of anyone trying to make this work because there isn't enough solutions for all of us to go around. So when I go back 120 years in time and people thought it was crazy to fly, hey, here we are, someone cracked the code in the end, and right, good for them for succeeding. We're waiting for SAF, electrical, hydrogen, and what else may be there, to really have some very smart brains solving it. We need technological breakthroughs. And we are, from a time perspective, resources, we're right, dedicating some resources to it, but also we're investing really real money. Like I said, Air France Galen and SAS being the number one and two airline in the world, spending money on SAF. Hi, Chris again from Point Hacks. Um, just generally speaking, in terms of the alliance, what size does an airline have to be for you to consider it joining? Does it need a certain degree of its network? Does it need a certain number of lounges or other partnerships? Um, I ask generally, but also in the context of the Australian market, where you don't have a domestic carrier, the only realistic possibility might be Regional Express, which has domestic flights, three lounges, but no international network. There's no limitation. Uh, there's no uh, really the, the only selection I would say would be if it makes sense for the other members. So we uh, we look at what are the existing partnership, what and what would be the business case for this airline and for the other members, and then uh, it's submitted to the to the uh, to the CEOs. Uh, there's uh, we are open to different models. It could be we don't have today this model. It's true, but we, it could be a feeder model or regional carrier. There's no opposition to that. 